And I think I'm just, I'm scared of all of it. I'm scared of the hard work. I'm scared of how much work lies ahead of me. Battle, battle waiting to be won. I know, I got things, I got stuff, just let me be. I love rage. <laughs> I'm already sweaty, so I might as well just commit and get it done. Get it, girl. and put my sunglasses on. I have morning, morning ET eyes. Happy Friday, good morning. I don't know what we're doing other than I felt like doing this. So anyway, Friday morning, pre-work walk. It's a little bit humid, but that's okay. Huffing and puffing, but that's okay because I'm on a time clock. <laughs> here comes the car because of course here comes the car. So don't know where the going to take me. I don't know where the weekend's gonna take me, but I'm gonna take you with me, and we're all gonna just figure it out together. Good morning again. It is almost 10 o'clock. I just thought I would do a check-in and talk about the day. So obviously it's Friday, I am working. I will say, even though we don't officially have summer Fridays, Fridays in the summer have been proving to be, knock on wood, much lighter days and a lot of people are out of the office. So my goal for today is I have an RFP that I'm working on. We're bidding out some work at a couple of our sites. So I need to finish my portion of the contract. And I would like to get my inbox into a place that is manageable. So let me preface this by saying, I have always been someone with an out of control inbox. I use it as a to-do list. I use, I have a hard time searching for things in folders. <laughs> just, I've always just let my inbox just, just be all the things. And you know, you get copied on things, there's groups on things, all that to say. I have 126, one just came in, <laughs> items in my inbox. 22 are unread, including three from this morning that I need to act on. And one of them literally just came in as I was saying this. So I would like to get that to just like one page in Outlook. And a lot of it is just a matter of needing to file stuff that's just been sitting there. But it's kind of like for those of us who were in the office in the day when you literally filed stuff in file cabinets, it would always sort of be the last thing I was gonna do. So that is on my must get done list for today. And I feel like all the alerts are coming in while I'm talking to you guys. So those are the two big things I need to do. And then just a bunch of, I'm like hoping to catch up because Monday is already a slammed day. So I'm trying to just pre <laughs> I was gonna say prep or prepare, trying to prepare for what's coming on Monday. So that's the kind of the work objective for today. And then hoping to be able to dip out a little bit early because it just basically becomes a ghost town after like two o'clock. So that's my plan. And the Barnes and Noble 50% off select hardcovers and vinyl and other such things starts today for us regular people. I'm not a premium member, I'm just like a regular member. So I thought it might be fun to go to the bookstore tonight for no other reason or later this afternoon than to check out what's there. Who surprised my memory card is full again. I don't know how that happened. Anyway, I have lost all train of thought. I'm thinking of going to Barnes and Noble later. So. I wanna get cracking on this. And part of the email thing, I spent a lot of time last night going through my Gmail and I am also notoriously terrible about staying on top of that, especially because life has been bonkers lately. Like it just has, it's just been, a, it's been a really rough summer. So I had like 250 unread emails in my Gmail and I'm really annoyed because I definitely missed some good stuff in like 
things that had timelines on them. I missed an email from a publisher. It was a, like a group email. It wasn't like just to me, but it was like for people in the program to participate in something and I completely missed it. And I'm really annoyed about that. I'm annoyed at myself. And it's funny, I looked back at the date of it and I was like, yep, totally makes sense why I was not like doing email stuff that day. So it's just been, it's just been a, a lot this summer and I'm just really annoyed that I let some stuff pass me by. Also, there were some great Sisters in Crime classes and I was like, oh, maybe I'll just like jump in and do this one. Everything that I'm interested in for like the thrillers and mysteries are obviously full because it's like for 30 or 40 people and they're all full up. And there have been emails for a really long time announcing them all. So I'm just sort of feeling very not great <laughs> on how I'm managing my life because I'm just not managing it. So I feel like I've been treading water, just getting by. So I'm hoping to have a bit of a productive day today mixed in with a little bit of kindness for myself, which doesn't necessarily mean spending money, but like also just like legit taking a lunch break, which I don't have a chance to do all the time and I even want to have that even when I have the chance I don't always do it and just try and be good to myself today so had a great walk this morning it's turning out to be a beautiful day today and yeah that's just what's happening for now so I'm gonna get cracking on work and I'll check in with you guys later Deja vu friends. I'm in the car I'm going to Barnes Noble. I feel like we've been down this road before. Um, it is also such psychotic sunshine. I can't quite see myself. So <laughs> I hope my head's in the frame. So yeah, I've got a long list of books on a wish list, and I had a good day at work. I got the things done. I got my inbox down to, I want to say it was 29 or 28 by the end of the day, which is good. There's more stuff I can clear at the beginning, beginning of next week. It's just some things that are in the air, but all in, got what I needed to get done, done. And not that I need a reward for a job well done, but I'm gonna go take Gander around Barnes & Noble. So let's see what happens. Also, traffic was abominable. I thought I was like killing it, coming out at four o'clock. Uh, no, <laughs> so much stupid traffic, but whatever. We're here, so here we go. Okay, all the sunshine again. Probably looking worse for wear. It's like a battle, a battle waiting to be won. Uh, I got two books I'll show you when I go home because it is hot as can be in the car right now. A little disappointed, but I also feel like it was the universe being like, you don't need that book. I was really looking for new releases, which I didn't think were gonna be on sale. But anyway, there are two books that I had on my list that I found. There was one of each of them. It was Slim Pickens, my friends. But the nice cashier told me that rumor is it's going to expand to paperbacks. So works for me. Works for me. Works for me. I'm not disappointed. It's all good stuff. I'm putting on the AC. I'm heading home. I'll talk to you from there. Okay. The bag is bigger than the amount of books I bought and the camera is lower than it should be. All right. This looks highly uneven. Hold on. It was highly uneven. It might still be. Water's knocking over. All right. All right, all right, all right. This is just going to be a struggle. Now the video card was full. I thought I cleared stuff off of this. Anyway, all right, so all that to say, <laughs> hi. 
back from Barnes and Noble. So I had a few things in my cart that I wanted. The only book that I couldn't get was the Twyford Code. I mean, there were a lot of books, but ones that I knew for sure were half off. The only one I couldn't get was the Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. I don't know if I'm going to buy it online. We'll see. It's out in paperback now, but of course I want the hardcover because the hardcover just is better, but I digress. First book I got is Going Dark by Melissa De La Cruz. So this is a YA thriller. This one caught my eye online and it has a missing influencer. So an influencer and her boyfriend go, I don't know if they go camping, they go somewhere. She disappears is the whole point. And the whole world is captured. So there's a hashtag, where is Amelia Ashley? The boyfriend is a suspect. Everyone's a suspect. I think it's going to be huge influencer culture kind of commentary, which I am totally here for. I just read Dark Corners by Megan Golden. I almost said Megan Abbott by Megan Golden, which has the influencer angle to it. So I'm kind of just in that zone. And I had a really good time reading that and it put me just sort of in that mode. So anyway, this one sounds like a good time. I'm here for the hot pink. And I want to say Melissa De La Cruz is the person who wrote Cat's Meow. I want to say that's her first book that she ever wrote. That was an adult book. She's written like all over the board. And I don't know if I'm making up that part. I'm not making up the memory. But many years ago when I was living in Boston, I was reading Cat's Meow when I, li when I lived on the T. <laughs> I didn't live on the tea. I just took it to work every day. And somebody came up to me and was like, she's my friend. That's so cool that you're reading her book. I can't wait to tell her. And at the time I was like, oh my God, I can't wait for like a moment where somebody, a friend of mine sees somebody reading my book. Still waiting. Haven't finished it yet. So anyway, got that. Sounds fun. And then the other one I got is called You Know Her. And this is by Megan Jeanette. So I had heard about this a little bit ago when it came out. And it's been on my radar. It's been on my wish list for a while. I've been watching it, but it is described as killing Eve meets sharp objects, which is all I needed to know. So it says a lush, savage Southern Gothic about two women, a fledgling murderer and the cop hell bent on catching her. So what isn't to like about this? I loved killing Eve. I haven't watched the final season of it because you guys know I got rid of Hulu and Netflix, but I will someday. I will someday, but this one just sounds really good. And this is a book that I feel like I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, which doesn't mean people aren't talking about it. I might not be watching the right people, but this, the core story of it all just really excites me. So this is her first novel and it says a crackling cat and mouse thriller in small town, Virginia. It probes the boundaries of female friendship and the deadly consequences of frustration fermenting into rage. I love rage. <laughs> I'm full of rage. And it starts in October. It says it's almost October. That's the first line in this because I was reading it when I was standing online. And I don't know if I'm going to save it for the fall. You know, I don't really make a plan, but very excited. So I got both of these books. I got some points for my, oh, I had to buy one fresh baked cookie, get one half off. Oh, it's good through the end of August. So at least I didn't miss out on that deal completely then yeah i got them for 25 dollars. so cha-ching cha-ching got a couple things on my membership and i'm a happy girl so that was well worth it at least even just to get out of the house this afternoon was a good time traffic is atrocious so i did look at albums i was super disappointed the album selection was not good i have been eyeing for no good reason i like barely use my record player i feel like it's just a collection nostalgia thing at this stage of the game but I wanted to get Gordon by Bare Naked Ladies if they had it they had no Bare Naked Ladies and then I was kind of looking at some other ones but I just wasn't sure like I just none of the ones I wanted were on sale let's put it that way and I was basically looking at all 80s things that I used to have that I got rid of which hurts I have a handful of my records from way back when but I definitely got rid of a fair amount of my collection so anyway went empty-handed with that so what I found and I know every store could be different because my understanding is like each store can put out whatever the heck they want but it was a ton of nonfiction, cookbooks like health kind of things which is nothing I was interested in the the mystery thriller table was small so that was kind of a bummer, but I guess there'll be more books coming. So this thing goes to like September 3rd or 4th. So anyway, we'll see what happens again. Not like I needed more, but from the list. So 
I am going to use my, and I was waiting just in case, I had my fingers crossed, but I didn't think it was actually gonna happen. I'm gonna use my Penguin Rewards money to get Burn the Negative by Josh Winning, which is like a thriller horror. So I was listening to him on, you guessed it, Killing the Tea with Gare and Kate, but I had heard about this book from, also you guessed it, Cade from Hey Atlas Creative, and Josh was saying how he was trying to carve out a place between Grady Hendrix and Riley Sager and finding himself right there in the middle. So kind of thriller, kind of horror, the space in between. And do you guys know I have a little bit of a challenging relationship with Grady Hendrix. I have read ish one book and I DNF'd it because I couldn't deal with the body horror. And I have read all the Riley Sagers and have something great to say about each one of them. So we'll see, but I'm gonna get that. And then I'll see about Twyford Code. I'm intrigued by it. Do I need it? I don't know. We'll see. I loved the appeal. And then I ordered her new book, which is coming out here. Do your research. Okay. I'm not sure when it's coming out here because Amazon is being a challenge, but it came out in the UK in January. So anyway, they're not connected, so it doesn't really matter. But I loved the appeal, so she's just sort of been on my mind lately. And then my wish is cracked. <laughs> That's kind of it for today. So I think I'm going to have like an early-ish dinner. It's only 5.30, that's like real early. Um, I don't know, but the Mets are playing tonight. It's gonna be a tough series. They're playing all weekend. They're making up games too. So there's four games this weekend against Atlanta. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be a thing, but I need to edit my video for Sunday. By the time you guys see this video, that thing may or may not go up. It's the 6K Q&A and I just, I, I am terrified of tackling it because you guys think I ramble here. I don't even know how much video footage that is and that's what's on this camera card and it keeps shutting down on me. So I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, I've got that to do. And then tomorrow I've got a long list of would like to do, and then I need to go get new eyeglasses. So I finally went, went to the eye doctor. It's a whole big insurance thing. Not surprised, my distance vision has changed. Basically I need glasses for everything but reading, which is kind of annoying. Cause like even here, like looking beyond you guys, there's a stack of books and I know what they are cause I know what they are, but I can't clearly read the names of them. So, I should be wearing my glasses more times, more often than not, but it's annoying because I'm like reading half the time and no, I'm not going bifocals. I'm not going bifocals. Oh, bif bif <laughs> bifocals. Man, did I just not say bifocals. So anyway, I need to get the prescription changed in some sunglasses and eyeglasses, and then I wanna look for a new pair of frames. And the store is only open till five. Yes, I probably could have gone today after work, but that would not have been fun. So anyway, I have to go there tomorrow. And I don't know what else. It's supposed to be warm, maybe thunder showers. I don't even know what's gonna happen. And this is a case of telling, not showing. So anyway, that is that. Barnes and Noble was great. Glad I went. And it's time for nighttime, evening, weekend. It's officially the weekend. Good morning, good morning. Happy Saturday. It's so beautiful out today. I'm just gonna run with it while it lasts. But yeah, out and about. I was like, is that car running? No. Um, yeah, obviously. <laughs> hey guys, I'm taking a walk. So I'm listening to podcasts today. I finished an audiobook. I realized I haven't even talked to you guys about what books I'm reading, so I'll fill you in on that later. But I did finish an audiobook yesterday. I would say average. 
and I am reading Divine Rivals, which is so out of my zone, but I'm really loving it. So anyway, I'm catching up on the Nancy Drew podcast. I talked about this in the other vlog, my obsession with that show. So it's a podcast that details all the episodes. So I love listening to all that good stuff. So that's what I'm doing, mostly because I couldn't decide what audiobook I wanted to listen to this morning, but I wanted to listen to something. So anyway, walking, breathing, breathing in all the good air. And I'm so happy it's the weekend. I'm so happy it's the weekend. And I slept real well, which I definitely needed. And I won't jinx myself, but I didn't wake up with a headache. So we're already about 10 steps ahead from where I expected to be just based on my current tracker. Okay, dudes with dogs, gotta go. Of sunlight. Man, there's no there's no good way to do this. Um, hi, maybe I'll just lean over and be weird. <laughs> so anyway, walk is walk is walking, but I thought I would just slow down for half a minute and talk without pounding my breath. Of course, here comes somebody. And yeah, so I'm just listening to the Nancy Drew podcast. We're absolutely getting a father daughter coming by. But yeah, I'm having a good morning, and uh, I'm going to head home soon. Timing is everything, isn't it? So, I'm totally jazzed. I need to watch the new Nancy Drew. It's the only one I haven't watched yet. And I spent so much time last night. Let me start with the fact that for the 6K Q&A, you guys absolutely crushed it. So I did not look at the questions ahead of time. I just took a quick glance just to see if there were any, cause I didn't wanna like get in my own head about stuff or like start to formulate answers. I just wanted to do it on the fly. There were so many questions I had. And of course I like, you guys think I can like ramble on a regular video, wait for it. I had one hour and 25 minutes of footage. So I got it down to like one hour and 14 minutes, which was a lot of ums being cut out, a lot of dead air. And then there were a few things, like talking about writing and stuff, where I just went down such a path and was repeating myself in a couple of the answers. So I did cut a little things out here and there, but I need to break it into two videos because even like, I love you guys and I know that you're in it to win it, but nobody needs an hour and 14 minute video. <laughs> so I need to finish that today, but that took, I knew it was going to take a long time. I knew I had a lot of footage. I knew it was going to be a lot of editing in the sense that like, I want to pop in questions and I've got to pop in like some book things. I definitely embarrassingly froze up with some book recommendation questions. Like I absolutely froze when people were asking about like great books that are set in New York, I swear my mind just went blank, but I've got some editing work to do today, but I need to go get my glasses. I need to, that's like my top priority today. So I gotta get cleaned up, have the breakfast, do the things, and then get that chore done because it's a must, you know, your girl's gotta see. And I'm not sure what else, but yeah, that was basically my night last night. It was a lot of editing and that's it. All right. So I'm officially hot. I'm officially busted. <laughs> and when you're holding a camera sideways, it kind of doesn't look like you're FaceTiming. I mean, I guess you can FaceTime sideways, but whatever. So off and running, um, off and walking as the case may be. So that's that. It's warm. It's getting hot in the sun. Okay. Bye. Saturday. It's way later than is necessary. It is 541. 
I have spent so much time editing this video. I have a really great knack for going down the rabbit hole and getting myself way into the details. And I'm not even kidding. I have been sitting here for hours and not hearing a peep from the world. And as soon as I do this, the world peeps. And yeah. So I really went down a rabbit hole with this video. I wanted to make it fun. It's just the sit down Q and A. And I thought, oh, it'd be fun if I like inserted some photos as I was talking about some stuff. And then I went really, really deep down a rabbit hole of my photos, <laughs> which go back all the years. And then I was trying to like get some book covers and then I was trying to insert the questions and oh my God, I have spent more hours on this video than anything else. And it's not even like that like wow i mean hopefully you guys like it it's it's a q and a i just i really i really can get in my own way a lot of the time so anyway that's how i've spent my afternoon but i did get some glasses which i'm excited about did i tell you this already i don't think so i barely read when i was eating lunch because i was thinking about this video so i read a little bit i eventually i'm going to tell you guys what book i'm reading it's divine rivals I will give you the proper rundown on it, but I want to get this thing uploaded. So there's a video for tomorrow and then other such thing. I just have things I want to get done today. But yeah, I have really spent a lot of my life working on this video. So that's where I've been and that's what's going on. We have had, we did wind up getting a downpour while I was in the eyeglass shop. So you want to talk about things working out well? I did wind up walking, which I'm glad I did and we've supposedly there was thunder before but nothing ever happened we're supposed to get storms tonight i don't even know what's going on and this is just sort of where i am and i'm pretty sure i've hit the point of crazy in my day so <laughs> i'm gonna get this video uploaded but i wanted to update you guys before i forgot and then the day gets away from me and we all know how that goes and my phone is pinging up a storm so i'm, I'm gonna answer that Sunday fun day. We got destroyed with rain last night, but it's beautiful now. Humid as all get out, but it's beautiful. So happy Sunday morning, everybody. I'm trying to hold you further from my face. <laughs> to ditch the jacket which I fully expected because it's hot out so hopefully I can get this in before I run into that group of dudes walking the dogs again but I woke up multiple times last night to thunder and pounding rain not gonna lie I usually sleep through all that stuff so that alone means it was epic but yeah it started at like 11 and I don't even know what time the other stuff was crashing and I didn't look but my migraine reared its ugly head last night. I had to take stuff at 8, I had to take stuff at 11, I went to bed with a headache. Not good, I feel better now. I feel like it might have been related to the weather, but then again, it's anybody's guess. So, optimistic for a better day ahead, stuff to do. I'm wearing this very old pair of sunglasses because I had to drop mine off yesterday and they kind of hurt my nose. I think because this hat is pressing on them but I feel super uncomfortable and fidgety and there's a bug. Um, oh my gosh, bug, why? Stay away from me. And yeah, this is me with no coffee, trying to get out, trying to beat the rush. I don't think I'm gonna do an epic walk because the weather's not amazing, but we'll see. I'm already sweaty, so I might as well just commit and get it done. And beyond that, anybody's guess but eventually I swear I'm gonna tell you what Divine Rivals is about I didn't promise a reading vlog I promised a who knows what's gonna happen so hopefully by this point you guys are used to it and hopefully some people are watching the q and took me a really long time to edit last night I worked on that thing for so long and I'm excited about it like I'm happy with what I did with putting in my pictures and stuff like that but Man, was that a slog. 
time blindness, you guys. I don't know how to plan for stuff. Also, epic pile of debris on the road. There's a lot of debris from yesterday's storm. There was a giant broken tree when I first went out. So, this storm was definitely kind of big last night. All right, it's a little buggy because of the humidity. And I don't want to eat a bug. So I'm just going to keep walking. Hello, happy Sunday afternoon. I just finished reading. I, very dramatically, <laughs> am going to paint my nails. I just finished reading like an hour ago, Divine Rivals, which I have mentioned multiple times I was gonna say on this podcast, on this vlog, and have yet to talk about it. So I thought I would multitask because that's the name of the game and it's 5.30 on Sunday and I've got stuff to do because I spent a good part of my day reading this book, which was wonderful, and kind of talk about it, do my nails, do that kind of stuff. So a while ago, I had had somebody ask me if I could do a video of me doing a manicure, I think it was, and I don't know I don't know if somebody wanted like an actual tutorial, which this is just gonna be sort of a cross in between. It's not an actual tutorial, but <laughs> for those who are here for the nail polish, there'll be some polish. For those who are here to talk about books, there's gonna be some book talking. So anyway, I really enjoyed this book and for no other reason. So cover of the book, you know, I love a book tab. I decided to go with blue tabs. Can you see that they're blue? I hope you can see that they're blue. And then weirdly, I was wearing blue on my sweatshirt today, so we're gonna do blue nails today. <laughs> this is how it all works. So I'm eyeing the battery light on my camera right now, and I realize it's running low, so let me get a backup battery so I don't have to try and do that when my nails are wet. And let's get this party started. Okay, so first, let me just apologize for the weird angle we have going on here. You are a thousand percent stacked on a shoebox and a bunch of books. My tripod was too tall. This thing is too short. So this is where we are. So a little nail, a little nail content first. Took my polish off last night. I did all the buffing and filing because nobody wants to listen to that sound, least of all me. <laughs> certainly not you guys it's like nails on a chalkboard so not sponsored in any way shape or form but i use all olive and june stuff i think yeah i use all olive and june stuff so i was just trying to think but i basically like got rid of all the stuff i have so first step is i will rub the nail polish remover over it to remove any final oils or anything that are on my nails so that you get a great base coat to start with so Divine Rivals is a fantastic book. Let me start with nails again. Okay, so I am going to do nail strengthener first. I usually put some kind of base coat. I have a nail strengthener and then I have a primer. Usually if I'm doing a dark color, I'll use a primer. This is a dark color. But these days I've been using the strengthener just, just cause. So I don't know if anybody wants to actually, maybe we'll do it a little bit. A little bit of both so you can kind of see what's happening. I don't know. I am a thousand percent using my to-do list as the <laughs> thing that I'm leaning on here. We'll fiddle with the camera. I feel like nobody's gonna wanna watch. All right, whatever. So Divine Rivals is a, I would say low key fantasy in the sense that it's something I could read. So you guys know I enjoyed Lore by Alexandra Bracken. I've read a couple of E.E. Schwab books. I know it's not really fantasy, but like Hunger Games. So that is sort of like my start and end with anything in that kind of a world. So I saw Divine Rivals on Cade from Hey Atlas Creatives Instagram. I was instantly intrigued because as the front of this says, no God, no creature, no war can come between them. It is a friends or no, it's an enemies to lovers story following Iris and Roman. So they are 18 and 19 respectively and they are both writers insert hearts so the core of the story because i don't want to obviously give you guys too much is iris and roman are both working for the same newspaper and they're both competing for a columnist job and they don't dig each other too much so they did not get off on the right foot they do not dig each other so iris is dealing with the fact that so it's just iris her mom and her brother 
Her brother has left to enlist in the war. He is on the front lines. She has not heard from him in months and has a lot of struggles with her mom. Mom's dealing with a lot of stuff. And Iris has been typing letters to her brother and she leaves them inside the wardrobe that they share in their flat. And in the morning, the letters disappear. So she's been writing him letters on her typewriter, hence the naked cover of this book, which is stunning. And what we know immediately, so this is not the spoiler, this is the setup, is that Roman is getting the letters and he is not answering them. And then finally he responds to one of the letters and her brother's name is Forrest and says, this isn't Forrest. So they start corresponding with each other. So he knows who she is. She doesn't know who he is and things evolve. So it is, I want to say they refer to a building as like enchantment. I <laughs> looked up a couple words at the beginning. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what this means. And then I realized so worried about my memory card or my battery dying. I did not pay any attention to the memory card being near death. Okay. Anyway, so I looked up some words because I didn't know what they meant and I felt like an idiot. And then I realized that they were not real words. They are words that were made up for the world in which this book takes place. So it, once I got past that when I was like, Oh, okay, I get it. Cause like, again, I don't read fantasy a lot. So I was like, Oh, these are like made up <laughs> words for things. Once I got past that, it was totally fine. So a great book for like entry level fantasy friends out there. So again, they are 18 and 19. It doesn't read YA to me. I almost feel like they could easily be in their early twenties, but neither here nor there, but they are two journalists and they have a magical connection. And it says they must face the depths of hell in a war between gods to seal their fate forever. So I really enjoyed it. I thought there were some really great supporting characters. This is the first book in a duology. The second book was supposed to come out in March of 2024 and it got pushed to December 26th of this year because that's how much hubbub there is around it. What is the name of that book you ask me? I I want to say I, I want to call it Reckless Vows but I know that that's not right so hold on. I just happen to have my computer right here with me so let me tell you guys about it. It is called Ruthless Vows. I was so close. I was so close. I'll insert a picture here for you guys. Barnes and Noble is doing a special edition of it. So that's the one I'm going to buy. I wanted to, I feel like I said this the other day, I wanted to at least get halfway through this to make sure I was really into it before I pre-ordered the sequel. So I will be doing that for sure, for sure, for sure. And let's get another coat of nail polish going. And then I can talk about the next book that I'm planning to read. I'm also going to try not to squeak this chair. Also like this is just this is like shoddy vlogging for you. Okay. So anyone who's familiar with Olive and June, their claim to fame is this thing called the poppy, which you can pop on to the top of the polish. And then it makes it easier to hold on to for when you're doing your nail polish. Now I've been painting my nails for a long time. This is one of those things that for some reason, my mom just used to let me do. <laughs> very trusting with me. Like I used to paint my doll's nails and it's funny, like looking at baby pic or not baby pictures of me, but like pictures of myself when I'm younger, like I always had nail polish on, obviously she was doing it for me, but nail polish has always been a pastime of mine. So I don't really use the poppy, but in the interest of this video, I'm going to. So I'm going to do this color is called social studies. I know you can't see it. This is from their fall collection. I want to say maybe two years ago. It's definitely one of my favorites and we're going to give it a go. So let's come down a little bit here. I know you can't see me, but can I change that? Hold on. Okay. This is just a little bit as good as it's going to get right now. So I am going to start reading. I'm not done with you yet by Jesse Q. Sutanto next, which I'm very excited about. So I have been struggling with trying to pick up an audiobook since the last one that I read. So I read We're All Lying by Marie Still. I'll pop that up for you guys too. I actually had an e-arc of that a while ago and then life just got away from me and I'm trying to work very big time. That's not really a phrase on my neck alley arcs. So this is a 
husband wife mistress story which for me <laughs> is intriguing so this is one of those books where like the book opens the police are there they're at the husband and wife's house and they are looking for emma who is the mistress because she has gone missing and they are questioning the two of them and we get this whole spiel from the wife who's like you know what she's been doing to us we haven't seen her i don't know what's going on and then we go backwards i don't know a couple of months maybe to kind of how everything went down so i typically love a book like that and this book i feel like part of the problem is when you read all the thrillers a lot of things start to become real obvious to you you start to pick up on things a little bit easier this is not a ding on the book i have just read way too many of those kinds of books i think so i was definitely hip to a lot of things that were happening and i was right about a lot of things which doesn't always diminish the book's reading experience for me but in this case it kind of did which was kind of a bummer but i think i had just read too many things that were similar and I just, you know, like when you're reading a book sometimes, you're like, oh, this reminds me of this or this reminds me of that. My battery light is flashing because of course it is. And anyway, that happened. So we get multiple POVs from Cass, who is the wife, her husband, and Alice, who is Cass's assistant. So at Cass, ass, Cass owns a business with one of her best friends. And basically like the mistress is gonna just like ruin everything. She's a life ruiner and Cass's entire world gets turned upside down. So I'm usually down for that kind of thing, like I said, and it wasn't inherently not good. It just wasn't for me in that I figured some stuff out. And also I, you guys know, I don't need a character to be likable. I love an unlikable character. I love the dark and messed up people doing the dark and messed up things, but I did not enjoy Cass as a character for multiple reasons. And I just had a hard time getting into it. So I, I mean, her husband is garbage because he had a mistress, but I enjoyed her husband. And I did enjoy some of the stuff from her assistant. I always loved that, like, outsider looking in kind of a POV in that sense. So I did enjoy that part of it. But I think if you're looking for a good mistress book, <laughs> I think... A Small Affair by Flora Collins was really good. I'll list all this stuff down below. I really liked A Perfect Marriage by Geneva Rose. I definitely enjoyed The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine. So I think if you're looking for kind of like, let's see how a marriage can implode or have like sort of the, what's the word? Not like besides the mistress, like an outsider coming in and just like disrupting someone. I, I was about to say a different book, but that is a spoiler for the content of that book. I think that is a good way to go. So not 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 good just i feel like i've read it before and the audiobook was really well done there were three different povs to that so i did enjoy again i really enjoyed the husband and the assistant's point of view and i enjoyed those audiobook narrators so since i finished that the other day i'm not quite sure what i'm in the mood for so this is a thriller which i'm going to start tonight is my game plan so i don't want to and i'll tell you what it's about in a minute i'm still watching that battery light flash I don't want to listen to a thriller because I do need to have separate worlds. Although I was considering doing the audiobook of Wonderland by Jennifer Hillier because the publisher did send me that. I've already read it. So as a reread, it wouldn't distract me as a thriller. But then I also feel like maybe I should just read a different book that I have. And I just don't know. Nothing's been calling to me all of the last two days <laughs> that I've tried. So I've been listening to podcasts. And today I actually just listened to music, which was fun. I haven't just listened to music on a walk in a little bit. And I don't know why when I was cleaning and stuff today. Like this. Sorry, battery died. Here we go. Back at it again. Gave, gave my nails a few minutes for the first coat. So anyway, <laughs> nothing to do with anything. I was listening to a lot of YouTube this morning while I was cleaning. I don't know why I was in the mood, but it was a line from Octung Baby, which is what got caught in my head. And I listened to that and man, I forgot that whole CD is great from start to finish. Just so good. And then I listened to some other ones and that's, that's that. So anyway, don't know what audiobook I want to listen to next. That is my plight. And I need to figure it out because I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. I miss it. So, I mean, it's been two days. I should relax. But I think I mentioned to you guys, I had been binging the 
9021 OMG podcast with Tori Spelling and Jenny Garth. And I am so invested in this, you guys. They just started on season three. And I finished because I'm not a Fairweather fan. But I could not watch a minute more of the Mets and the Braves last night. I think they lost 21 to three in the first game. I mean, I did not watch the entire game. In all fairness, the Mets did put like their second baseman into pitch towards the end because it was like that kind of a game, but it, brutal. So anyway, I finished, I watched Nancy Drew. I'm all caught up. It's so good. It's so good. If you know, you know. And I finished season one of Beverly Hills 90210 last night. And I loved everything about it. So the bummer is that because of copyright and all that other nonsense, all of the original music with very few exceptions is stripped out of the show. And if you have watched rewatches of Dawson's or Felicity or anything, you know, it absolutely changes the experience. But I am, I am, I'm in it to win it. I am in it to win it. So I, I don't even have the words for how much I loved this show and loved those actors. So anyway, I'm enjoying it very much. And I did part of that last night. And yeah, um, my headache started before my 90210 binge did. <laughs> so I can't blame the show. Oh my God, it's so good. So anyway, the Mets are playing tonight. I will probably tune in at the beginning. They're on ESPN, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a huge fan of the ESPN announcers. I just like the regular dudes on SNY. But anyway, so I'll probably watch that a little bit. And then I'm gonna start this book, which I will talk about in half a minute. So this is Jesse Q. Sutanto's adult debut. I read one of her YA books. I have not read anything else. Am I lying? This is her adult thriller debut. I feel like I'm talking out of, out of school on her. I also want to make sure this is close so I don't knock it over because, you know, I'm going to knock it over. So, patience. Okay. This was gifted to me from Berkeley, which I am so jazzed about. So grateful. So excited. This was the main book on the August new release list. It was the only one that I was like desperately interested in. So I haven't read the anti series yet. I do have an e arc of Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers. So those are more cozy mystery. This is supposed to be dark and messed up thriller and dark and messed up female friendships. And they are both writers also. So I'm also like on accidentally on purpose, the train. So this says some friends and friendships are worth killing for in this dark twisty suspense novel. So it is Jane. She is unhappy. She's a struggling midlist writer. And she winds up getting invited to a conference or an event in New York by Talia. I don't know if it's Talia or Thalia, T-H-A-L-I-A. She was Jane's best and only friend nearly a decade ago during the creative, their creative writing days at Oxford. And I don't know if it's like obsession. I don't know what all happened, but it just says one night ruined everything the blood soaked night that should have bound Talia and Jane forever, but instead made it made her lose her completely. So they wind up going to New York City and or they meet up in New York City. I don't even know. I don't even want to know. I don't want to know more than that. I have heard some great things about it by some early readers of this. I want to say this is one of the ones that Ashley Winstead was raving about in one of the podcasts. May Cobb blurbs it on the front. It says not since Gone Girl has a sociopath been this bewitching. I am absolutely a sucker for favorite authors blurbing books. El Casamano blurbed it, Amy Suter Clark, Lori Elizabeth Flynn, who wrote The Girls Are So Nice Here, which is a book that I loved. So it's dark. So Kirkus says it's dark comedy. So I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm very excited for it. So I will, of course, keep you guys posted because this is what I'm going to start tonight. And other than that, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It does not have a beautiful naked cover, though, but it's okay. It's okay, right? Okay, let's let this coat dry and then I will come back to you. Otherwise, it's gonna be like a 45 minute video of me talking about nail polish, <laughs> which fine by me. Okay, third coat, here we go. Typically, depending on the polish, I will do two to three coats. This one I feel like needs a good three to deal with. Um, I feel not that it doesn't streak. I feel like it, you don't always get that full coverage. And I want some 
full coverage. So anyway, here we go. So 90210 Obsession. I'm trying to think what else I can talk to you guys about. <laughs> It's like when I realized that I don't have a whole lot going on to talk about. I still have not written a single flippin' word. I I know. I can't even feel like my hand's gonna shake as I try to talk about it. I, I don't even, I have no excuses. Though, they did post the early bird sign up for International Thriller Writers slash Thriller Fest for 2024. So... I'm not going to quote all of them. I will link it down below. Ruth Ware is one of the spotlight guests. Dennis Lehane is one of the spotlight guests and a whole bunch of other people. So I have seen Ruth Ware once before in a bookshop talk and got to meet her and all that fun stuff. This is when I always want to call it lock every door. Turn of the key came out and I would very much enjoy seeing her. And then there's always another author who interviews them, which they haven't announced yet. So I would love to go back this year. I would love to make that a goal, a possibility. Their early bird special usually lasts for a while. I'll be honest, I have not looked at the pricing online. It's an investment conference for sure. And I don't know if I would go for all of it. There's different modules you can go to, like there's Craft Fest, there's Thriller Fest. I don't know if I would do all of it again. I need to see, but I would really like to go back. I haven't been since 2019. So I did not feel ready to go this past year. I had just started my job. It was a lot of money. I did not sign up for it in advance. So anyway, that ship sailed pretty early for me, but that is on my list. And I still keep rambling about how I want to have this draft done by mid-October. I'm going to need to do some cleanup work. I always need to do cleanup work. And I'm nowhere near that. I haven't done anything. And every time I read a book, I always read the acknowledgments and I usually get pretty choked up by it. So even reading for Divine Rivals today and just how hard it is to write a book and what an accomplishment it is to actually see it to the finish line, never mind to see it to the shelves. And it always gets me so excited and then like intimidated and <sighs> fantasy about me, like maybe me, maybe me, and I'm not doing anything to work towards that. And then I get really upset with myself and then I beat myself up and it's just a vicious cycle. And basically I continue to stall myself. And I think I'm just, I'm scared of all of it. I'm scared of the hard work. I'm scared of how much work lies ahead of me. I'm scared of failing, of not being able to finish again, of not, there's hair in my mouth. <laughs> of not, um, I say I'm a lot, of not, not being able to do it. And I'm psyching myself out and I'm shutting myself down and I'm self-sabotaging. I'm self-sabotaging. This is not, this is not therapist talk. This is me talk. I know I am in my own way and I don't know how to get out of it and I don't know how to break through. Another book that I got from the library on audio, which I feel like kind of has nothing to do with this, but maybe has something to do with this is the 5am club. So I borrowed it from the library maybe like a year ago and never listened to it. And then I was watching Haley in Bookland. I'm loving her new content where everything is basically vlog style. And she talked about reading it. I don't know, maybe it was like a month or so ago. And I'm definitely back in getting up early before work so I can go for a walk. I was going to start by doing it like two days a week if I could, weather permitting. And basically now I'm like any day that I can get out, like basically if it's not pouring rain, I will do it. And it's made a huge difference. So trying to be more, it's not like I'm trying to get up hours and hours and hours earlier. Like I'm going to be <laughs> like the 3 a.m. club before you know it. But I'm more interested in it about how to be productive with my time because I have found particularly over the past few years I am not good at managing my time, at using my time well, of taking advantage of the time that I have. And not that I wanna schedule my entire life away because I'll be honest, again, I said this in the other video because I'm gonna lie to you guys. I really wanted to finish Divine Rivals today. I have a to-do list of things that I would like to get done slash need to get done. And I was like, I'm just gonna, sit and read this book. And I went from here when I was eating lunch to my chair over there. 
and I just sat and read. And I did a couple things in between, like I did the dishes, I got up, I moved around, but my text messaging is going off. But on one hand, I felt super guilty on this beautiful day, but I did go out this morning, just sitting and reading. And it was like too hot and kind of muggy to sit outside on the porch and read. I know, I got things, I got stuff, just let me be. And I felt just really guilty about doing it. But then on the flip side, I was like, why shouldn't I? I work all week, I do a bunch of stuff. I was productive yesterday, I was productive this morning. Why shouldn't I sit and read my book? And then of course I was like, well, you could be writing your own book. Why are you sitting and reading somebody else's book? And then it just, shoo. So I, I don't know that the 5am club is full of good nuggets, but maybe it is. So we'll see. So anyway, all right, I'm going to let this one dry and then I will come back for a finale for the top coat and final thoughts on the vlog, not on the nail polish because <laughs> I've done this color a hundred times before. <laughs> okay. We're dealing with some afternoon light here, but we're in, in the home stretch, so it's fine. So I'm going to do a little cleanup. And then while we were on a break, I mean, I'm literally doing like five or six minutes in between coats here. It's like I went and go did a bunch of stuff. I put Hold on the Firm by John Grisham, the audiobook. So I read that ages ago. And the, I'm looking at my computer, The Exchange, which is the second book in the series, is coming out in September, which I would very much like to read. And I'm not opposed to physically rereading The Firm, but I'm also well aware of all the other books I would like to physically read. So anyway, I just did that. But there's like an eight week hold on it, but people might pass, so we'll see. But I would like to read some more of his stuff get back to it, reread, and then read some more because I have a pretty decent Grisham collection. So anyway, I'm just trying to do some touch-ups for the run over. So again, not sponsored, but there is a 20% code down below if you guys want to do a kit from Olive and June where you get all this starter stuff. So you get like the poppy, you get, I'm pretty sure you get the polish remover, you'll get like a nail file, it's a whole thing. And you get to pick what color you want. I think you get a top coat. I think you can do either like one or two polishes with the kit for X amount of bucks, or you can get like six polishes. You can do all sorts of stuff. They come out with new polishes all the time now. It used to be few and far between. They do like a collection a season. And now it's like all the time and they have regular polish and they have quick dry. This is a regular polish. So the sky is really the limit. I swear it's like totally addictive if you're a nail person like I am. And yeah, I just, this has been a ritual of mine forever. I'd love to do my nails. So anyway, I just got on the wait list for the firm and then we'll see the other series, which I was debating breaking my own rules and jumping in on book number three. Joanna Schaafhausen has her Annalise Vega series. So I physically have the first two and then I have the arc of the third one, Dead and Gone, which came out last week, which has a dark academia element to it. Part of it's set on a college campus. I kind of was feeling like I want to read that, but I also kind of feel like I should go back to the beginning, like just start from the beginning. So I did get the audiobook from my library of the first book in that series because I feel like I can separate police procedural from dark and messed up thriller. So we'll see, I might try that one. And then I will obviously let you guys know what I wind up doing, but I kind of feel like that would be fun. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And then I do have 5am club, which I mentioned half a minute ago. So anyway, all right, I feel like we're kind of cleaned up here. It's not always perfect, but at least it's something. It wasn't like terribly over, it's just, it's just what it is. Okay, and now magic top coat. So they do have a quick dry top coat. This is their regular one, super gloss top coat. I mean, it's not like I'm not, I, like I don't think you guys like don't believe that I'm actually, oh, this chair, that I'm actually doing this, but in case anybody wants, is this like an ASMR where people like <laughs> feel some satisfaction? I like watching people do their nails. There's just, I don't know but I don't like having somebody do my nails. I used to, but I'm far too fidgety for that now. I just can't sit still for it. So I have not had my nails done in forever, but way, 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 way back in the day, I did have acrylic nails before 
anybody realized, I think, how horrible that stuff was. A girl that I worked with turned me on to them because I was in a wedding and I had like destroyed all of my nails. She's like, go get acrylics. I'm like, you think? Uh, and I did that for like a year. But anyway, that was a, a different time and place. I mean, your polish stays and they look great, but it's definitely a time investment. And when I got them taken off, it took a really long time to get my nails back to something human again. So I don't think I would ever go back to any kind of artificial nail again. It just didn't work for me. My nails do not stay chip free, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I've come to just, it's just one of my things. Just one of my things. So anyway, on that note, tonight is going to be gone in a flash. It already kind of is. It's like 630. So yeah, work week starts tomorrow. I'm trying to figure out like a long weekend just for like a bit of a break. It's funny. I feel like when you work from home, it almost feels strange to like take days off because like you're here all the time anyway, but I mean, you're working. I don't know. I'm not great with vacations. I don't know what it is. And it's not that I think the world can't live without me because my gosh, this place can live without me. I didn't even exist. Like my job didn't exist before they hired me. So it's not that. I don't know. But I think I would do myself a little bit of service by taking a day or two off because I have not had an actual vacation in forever. And any day that I've had off since I started this job, I have had a doctor's appointment or a family commitment. I had one day off where I actually had had a planned, it was a planned family event, but every other day that I have taken off from work has like aligned with a doctor's appointment or something that had to be done, like not something fun. So perhaps I could do with just, ah, I just dropped that. Whew. Did not mess up the nail. Multitasking friends, multitasking. So anyway, I'm going to try and figure that out. And I think that would be good for me. And then I would like to take, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you guys. I never know who I talk to. Like, I mean, I know. You... Try that again. I, our cycle, our calendar vacation cycle is October 1 to September 30th, which I have never had that before. And I, when my boss told me that, like he was like, you haven't taken any vacation, you've gotta take some time before the end of the year. And I was like, there's plenty of time. And I'm like, I'm like a fall person. I always take time in October. And he was like, oh, well like the fiscal year ends September 30th. And I was like, what? So I've got to get cracking. So I would like to take maybe a week in September. I don't have any plans, but anyway. So on that note, I think I've said that 10 times already, I am gonna call it a night. So thank you guys for watching the vlog. I know it was sort of all over the place as per usual. And yeah, I don't know, this is kind of fun. I'm enjoying these sort of off the cuff kind of things. And I don't know. We'll see. I realize my content is changing. I still need to, not that it's changing, but like just lately I've kind of done a couple different things. I need to do my July, July wrap up and yeah, I've just got a couple other things cooking. So you'll see them when they're fully baked. <laughs> I hate when people pun it up. All right, I'm going to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have made it this far, you know the drill. You guys are total rock stars. And I need to upload part two of my Q&A, which is part two of you guys being rock stars. So I will see you guys. You guys will have seen me in that video before you've seen this video. And then I'll see you in the next video because that's how it all works. So take care, everybody. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.